Hello, all you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online, and you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, welcome back to another episode. Here we go again. It is a fabulous Friday. Today, as this show gets released to the world, and hope you are fabulous wherever you are, I know I'm feeling fabulous, and I like to read from time to time on Fridays a little bit of Oneness, the book. Uh, As you guys know, we had actually had Sandra Walter on this week as an interview as an Ascension guide, so I thought, you know what, I should pick up, uh, I should pick up what I view as the guidebook to Ascension, uh, Oneness, yet again, choose a random chapter, and I've done that, chapter 31, I'm going to read today, discuss a little bit, but before I do, I'd like to read a few reviews on iTunes. You guys know I love my iTunes reviews. Not only do they help us to reach new people, they help to fuel my fire to continue this labor of love and The reviewer iTunes a lot said, high vibe listening. The Positive Head podcast will help keep you in alignment and high vibrational. Show yourself some self-love by giving this show a listen. Thank you, Brandon. Oh, thank you, iTunes a lot. And that was a short but sweet uh, little review there. So I'm going to read another one. Uh, This one is by Morgan Rose Gold. Grateful and excited. Hi, I recently started listening to podcasts and I'm so happy, so, so happy I came across yours. I'm interested in literally every subject you talk about. So when I found over 400 episodes, actually over 500, (laughs) I was so overwhelmed with joy. Thank you so much for putting out such interesting content so frequently. I've been listening nonstop for the past week now and will continue to do so. Thank you for creating this awesome community of people as well. It's hard to talk about my spiritual journey and spirituality in general with others as they usually think I'm crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Uh, thank you, Morgan, for taking the time to review. And uh, the the community Morgan is referencing there is the Facebook group Positive Heads. Uh, so if you're not in there, uh, please join up and connect with other listeners. It's a wonderful, wonderful group of P heads, as I like to affectionately refer to all you guys as. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can join up there. And as far as all the episodes, yeah, this is something that I was suggesting the other day. Um, if you have someone that you think would do really enjoy the podcast, but you know, trying to find a unique way to engage them to listen, I would recommend uh, telling them, say, hey, you, let me show you this show. There's a lot of talk about synchronicity. Let me give you an example. Choose a number between one and 560, which is, I think, I'm at, uh, at as far as episodes now, actually. Um, so once they choose that number, say, great, you chose number 311. Here you go. Listen to this podcast. I guarantee you there'll be something that specifically speaks to you in there. And by playing with the universe in this way, it always, it never disappoints. And it's a great way to sort of gamify sharing the show with other people. So uh, I would encourage you guys to uh, 
reach out to friends and family that you think uh, will take that hook, if you will. And then maybe we can get them hooked into our group, our soul fam as well, and get the the high vibrations continuing to spread. Um, all right. Speaking of spreading high vibrations, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, switch gears and read a little bit from Oneness. This is a book written by Rasha. Uh, very, very powerful book. Uh, supposedly uh, received and transcribed, you know, channeled material, as I often say. Um, I don't know whether it's coming from her own head or whether it's really coming from somewhere else. Uh, a true channeling doesn't really matter to me. What does matter is how powerful the information is. I do believe we're ascending vibrationally as a species uh, on this planet. And there's a lot of things uh, that happen as part of that process. And having a little insight in what to expect. I know for me, having originally read this book like 10 years ago, a lot of what I read has come to pass as far as, hey, here's what you can expect. Here's some of the things you're going to go through. Here's some of the, the, the trials. Here's some of the tribulations. Here's some of the growth. Here's some of the, you know, wondrous, magical things that are going to start to unfold. So, uh, and what's great about this book is you can really just pick it up anywhere and start reading and uh, you're going to get, you know, it's, you, you can read it front to back, but you don't have to. So um, I decided today, speaking of gamification and playing with the universe, chapter 31 must be what people need to hear today because that's what popped into my head. So the title uh, of this book or the, the topics that are, co- are in this chapter, what's covered is manifesting the world of the artist, recreating the world of the dreamer liberating the dreamer within sounds fun let's read as one begins to progress through the initial stages of the ascension process and the rudimentary portions of the release work have been confronted one becomes aware that one is suddenly viewing the world through different eyes The attendant difficulties to which you had become so accustomed and which, through your anticipation, once persisted despite your awareness of them, suddenly are no longer there. And one emerges in the rarefied space of recognizing a new beginning marked by the unprecedented freedom of choice. Without the familiar obstacles to dictate or to limit the range of one's direction, one is struck by the profound awareness that there are literally no limits to what you may now choose to experience within the context of this physical form. With the newfound absence of limitation comes the realization that one must now take total responsibility for the focused intent that underlies one's choices. One can no longer take the default position that one has no choice or that one was obliged to select from a limited number of options and situations. The full thrust of one's intent draws into the arena of possibility the circumstances that will carry that intent through the manifestation, through to manifestation. Thus, the process is less a byproduct of making choices from a given number of possible options than of starting from a position of limitlessness and drawing forth the corresponding options as possibilities to be embraced as choice. Become clear as to what it is you truly wish to do or experience or know, and that very clarity will magnetize the circumstances through which one may explore one's one's heart's desire. Life becomes a process through which experience is custom made to order vibrationally and is no longer perceived as a journey that is ready made and mass produced. You are not required to do anything and it is helpful to condition yourself in the recognition that every nuance of your life is a sequence that has been called forth by you by choice. The level of clarity with which you focus your intent helps to determine the ease or degree of complexity that manifests accordingly. When you approach the process of manifestation at the higher vibrational levels to which you now are ascending, you are no longer afforded the luxury of passivity. The old mode of operation that may have seen you living your life with a wait-and-see approach will not manifest anything at the higher vibrational levels other than confusion. For here, the complexity of predetermining conditions, characteristics of denser realities are no longer present. Once one has cleared the slate of the karmic vibrational remnants that once comprised one's energy field, there is literally nothing left with which to magnetize life experience other than the vibrational essence of what it is that you want. 
In order to function effectively in a world where all the rules have changed, it is wise to take the necess- necessary time now in anticipation of those conditions to become clear on where you wish to be going with this physical or incarnation you call your life. Mixed feelings on a given issue will manifest mixed outcomes every time under the vibrational conditions toward which you now ascend. Reluctance and half-heartedness, in essence, nullify the fundamental charge that would call forth the circumstances in question. Now is the time to focus your awareness upon the importance of being clear in your intent before engaging in the action of choice. It is not possible to manifest one's heart desire by continuing to drift along, waiting for life to happen to you. At the higher levels, it simply doesn't work that way. In order to manifest the world of the artist, it is necessary first to recreate the world of the dreamer. This is the world of the eternal child into which you were born in this lifetime. A child does not know the concept of limitation. These are shackles with which his world equips him from the earliest stages of his development. In his dreams, there are no limitations, and his wishes and desires dominate his every moment, calling forth what it is he most wishes to experience. Initially, the desires are rudimentary, and his focused approach to what he wants to experience reinforces the manifestation of those results. As his development progresses, his desires are thwarted and his dreams are dashed by the rules of a reality with which, with which he is forced, force-fed. Soon those rules are integrated into the formulation of a belief system that cripples his abilities to manifest his heart's desires. The energy of focus shifts from what was truly desired to what is perceived to be possible. And even in the early stages of his development, he learns to weave a complex route through the labyrinth of his life in an attempt to salvage some fragment of the original dream. Ultimately, the magic of the dream and the accompanying joy of dreaming it becomes lost in a realm ruled by logic and strategy. And in shifting one's focus from the joy of dreaming the dream to the fear that fuels overcoming suppression of the dream, the child forgets how to dream. These times are about reinstating those skills, for without them, one is destined to recreate the conditions of a world defined by limitation and struggle. Your essential nature is not focused in goal-oriented activity, but is rooted in your feeling body, your emotions. The drive you experience toward accomplishing a given end is not based upon a need to fulfill a dream, but rather is based upon a need to avoid sliding into the abyss of your fears. Thus, the motive for most of what you have been taught to strive for is fear-based. That type of energy produced a limited level of results in the realms through which you have progressed thus far in your journey. But the thrust of this type of energy would manifest results that you would not find pleasing at the levels you are soon approaching. It will be necessary to learn to distinguish within the context of your desires between those that are based in fear and those that stem from the innocence of the joyousness that is your fundamental essence. To recreate the authenticity of your dream, you will wish to begin to scrutinize your true motives for wanting to do what you are telling yourself you want to do. If you wish to build a fabulous home with your own hands, for example, it would be important important to know whether that desire is based upon the unbridled pleasure you had derived in the act of that creation or whether at some level you seek to prove something in your own eyes or in the eyes of others. The former desire is born of the dreamer within you. The latter is rooted in the energy of separation. The dreamer derives his limitless joy through the expression of his isness in ways that please and delight him without regard to the benefit that may be forthcoming in the way of the opinion of others. Even to the extent that self-esteem may be rooted in goal setting within the sanctity of one's own consciousness, one sets up the parameters of duality, of success or failure. With such a mindset, there is no success or failure for the dreamer. There is simply the essence of the dream. There is no challenge inherent in the dream, nor any place for judgment, whether internally or externally focused. The dreamer has no qualifying considerations whatsoever in releasing the pure essence of the dream into the embrace of the ethers that carry them forth into manifestation, simply that the idea is infinitely pleasing. There is no concept of of the attainment of a goal for the dreamer, for the very concept opens the door to consideration of what may or may not be considered possible by a mind structured in linear logic. The dreamer does not care what is or is not possible, for the dream is based in limitlessness. 
The dream is totally without structure. The dream is found in the depths of the child who still dwells within, regardless of how disenchanted or disillusioned you may consider yourself to be. Regardless of how jaded you are or how broken by life's blows, the dreamer remains untouched. And reconnecting with the rarefied spark of your own divine essence is the key element in restructuring the life you are preparing to transform. Before the artist can begin to emerge from the radiant core of your being and give expression to the unique creation that is to be your life, you must first find and liberate the dreamer from the prison of your linear consciousness. The dreamer to be embraced is not the ego-oriented aspect of self that would have fueled your ambitions with focused strategies oriented towards achievement. The dreamer is the glowing spark of joyousness that somehow becomes buried beneath the burden of all you have undertaken to do in this lifetime. The dreamer does not dwell in the realm of doing but thrives in the innocence of simply being. The dreamer is set free when you set aside the ego-focused priorities with which you have tried with which you have tied your own hands and allow your true essence to emerge. Once you have made the connection with the unconditional state of joyousness that radiates within you, you have taken the first step in restructuring the direction of your journey. When you have tasted of this connection with your very own self, you will begin to understand why, at some level, life has declared a quote-unquote timeout. It will begin to make sense to you that when the circumstances of your life allowed to continue on quote unquote automatic pilot, you would not have arrived at the destination toward which you are now headed. You begin to recognize once in the aspect of the process that your life had delivered you to the vantage point of a plateau. There was an element of clarity from having ascended to that perspective and with it came the realization that the plateau was going nowhere. It offered the potential of the perpetuation of the essence of that level and a sense of clarity that there was nowhere to go from there, not without first descending from the plateau. As you begin to emerge from the devastation of the structure of your circumstances, it begins to become obvious why that experience was a necessary part of the journey. The fortress you had constructed upon the plateau of your experience had, in fact, become the prison in which your very own sacred essence waited patiently. The fresh innocence of unbridled joy that you harbor within cannot thrive in the structured conditions you created in a world built on the premise of compromise. The sweetness of the vision of the dreamer awaiting your rediscovery is the elusive missing piece in your journey of self-discovery. For without the illumination of the heart of the dreamer, you would continue to travel blindly on the path that compels you to venture forth upon it. Before you can become clear within yourself as to what you want to do with your life, it is essential that you pause in your program of frenzied activity to discover who you really are. Then and only then have you prepared the conditions in which the artist can emerge and give expression to your true essence in a way that will provide a life that is rich and satisfying in all the ways you quietly yearn for. for. Alternatively, you could continue indefinitely trying this and trying that in an attempt to source from the outside world that elusive something that always seems to be missing. And you could choose to shuffle and reshuffle those cards of possibility indefinitely, trying to come up with the missing piece that will tie it all together. For the missing piece is not to be found in any of the distractions that present themselves in and of themselves. Yet, that elusive element, once found within could well express through any of those infinite possible avenues and provide the perfect medium for the artist to paint with passion your true life's work. Before you can begin to determine where to go from here in terms of what you choose to do, take some time at this particular crossroads in your journey to become reacquainted with yourself. This is an exercise that most will wish to do in solitude, and you can expect to be nudged in a direction that provides for generous periods of alone time. You may find yourself withdrawing from your normal circle of activities and friends and seeking out circumstances that allow you to be in the sanctity of your own consciousness. This is all part and parcel of the process of metamorphosis that holds you in its embrace. For in order to reunite with the dreamer, one must withdraw into the silence of inner solitude. And the elimination of the distractions of daily life during this period is a necessary part of the process. Your agenda will become simplified in of itself when you reach this stage of your journey, and there will no longer be the predictable excuses that would have allowed you to postpone the self-confrontation that awaits you. The moment for turning inwards announces its arrival blatantly in silence. 
Once you recognize the signs of its presence and cease filling the empty spaces it creates with quote unquote busy work and mundane social interaction, you are able to relax into the sanctity of the special time that has been set aside for you alone. Within this haven from the outside world, you will begin to turn back the pages and to retrace your steps through the epic adventure you are living. And in the high points and low points that will highlight the story, you will be able to recognize the places where the dreamer began to surrender the dream. You will be able to remember the pain of the disappointments and the anguish of the defeats that set the stage for a script founded upon disillusionment and compromise. You'll begin to trace the beginnings of the choices exercised in resignation rather than passion. And in weaving together the theme that underlies these episodes, you will experience the clarity that comes of identifying the pattern and an end to the mindset that has driven you to perpetuate it. It will become obvious to you that in following in those footsteps, a vital part of your sacred essence has been lost. And in the absence of that divine spark, the episodes that followed suit somehow felt dry and lifeless, despite all the trappings with which you adorn them. Now, in the clarity of your retrospective vision, it is time to prepare for your reunion with the dreamer who, like a child, wandered away when it wasn't fun anymore. While you were so busy doing your life, you didn't even notice he was missing. Not until much later, when it was obvious that something very precious was very lost. Now is the time to simply stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop all the mechanical practices that absorb your every waking moment. Stop your compulsion to pull others into your drama as a way of avoiding focus on the one who stands at center stage. This aspect of the process is not about others. It is not about what you are doing or who you are doing it with. That missing element is not the byproduct of the wrong relationship or the wrong profession or the wrong spiritual path or a technique of spiritual practice that is exercised incorrectly. Those are all potential vehicles through which the passion of the dreamer might be given expression. In the sanctity of the silence you have afforded yourself, you will begin to recognize the instances in your earliest experience when your natural, unrestrained enthusiasm and eager curiosity was allowed to play freely. And in recapturing those precious, simple moments and the timelessness of memory, you will rediscover the true path to self-discovery. What you yearn to experience and fault the external trappings of your existence for not providing has been within you all along, waiting patiently. Ah, that's the end of chapter 31 of Oneness. Hope you guys enjoyed. I so relate to that. Uh, It even referenced uh, the soul of the eternal child. And you guys have heard my story. Um, One of my magical stories was someone channeling, having a channeling experience and relaying that to me as I'm the soul of the eternal child and we're all the soul of the eternal child. It's all within each one of us. It's just a matter of reconnecting with that lost part of ourself that through disappointment and neglect has been pushed aside. You're here to go through this process of sort of losing and refinding your child. So don't your inner child. So don't beat yourself up for it. Love and embrace this journey. Embrace this path that you're on. You can laugh at this. It gives it perspective. It makes it all worthwhile. You can fully appreciate the inner child now because, you know, being born into it and then losing it, now finding it again, it gives it, it, give it, it, gives it context. It gives it contrast. It, get, it helps you to fully understand this powerful, powerful part of yourself uh, and to appreciate it. And to uh, now the question is, what will you do with this rekindled uh, joy, this rekindled relationship within yourself, with yourself? So much can come from unbridled uh, creativity and a limitless dream that we all reside in currently. And as we find our way back to that innate power. I wonder what you all create. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what I'll create next. I know I will create. I am an artist. You are an artist. And with that, I have a wonderful artist to leave you with today. Reggie Watts, such a creative artist. This song, it's about apples. It's called a song about apples in parentheses. Always love yourself. Hope you enjoy this magical song until next time. Journey well. Love you all. 
Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. So many questions like that famous one, why? Do you know him? Does he know you? Did you do a little hanky-panky off at the San Diego Zoo? Did you see the koalas? Did you see the tigers and the bears, the wolves, the, the things you shouldn't see? Did you hold his hand in a park? Did you go to a movie? How dare you have someone you cared about before me? It's so right for me to get jealous. Cause I gotta think of you as a piece of property. I've gotta hold on to you. When I say you're my girl, it really means that I own you inside of my mind. She thinks that's sexy. Cause she thinks that's cool. Cause love should be based on insecurity, my fools I know it's true And it feels so good to be Slightly addicted to someone that you feel you can't learn about But don't worry now Cause there's more A kissing and a smooching and a smooching and a kissing and a smooching And a maybe just a little bit of fucking and you gotta do it right Listen to what they are saying Their body will respond in time and kind And you will understand or glean Oh yes, you'll glean Cause gleaning is a thing we can do If we really open up our listening Oh yes, I feel how lovers like to entwine in the moment Cause there's always the discrepancy between the biological lead to to procreate, oh But sometimes it gets confused with the idea, the construct that society lays upon us for, oh yeah You watch a movie, you think it's like that, yeah You watch a TV show, you think it's like that, yeah You read a book and you think it's like that But it hasn't been like that for very long Because society hasn't developed the technology to place their stories and constructs in the philosophical medium that's entertaining for us to understand and plus there's so many of us here on this planet we need a system to organize ourselves in a way that makes us feel like we come from a tradition of culture it's so cool but it's scarier to get your things in order and understand there's no order we're all improvising in any way that makes you happy is truly the way that you should survive because otherwise you're living under systems that don't match who you are and you'll be fighting that all of the rest of your life anyways just be happy just do everything with love and you'll see everything will be okay just do what you need take that time to do the in between Don't use those things against another person. Remember, every person is an opportunity to learn more about yourself because you are listening.
to where they're coming from and they represent a reflection of yourself as long as you understand that there's more to this life there's always so much more to this life Once you feel it, you can't get rid of that itch. 